Hello and welcome to Nature Day's Outdoor Learning Resources, sponsored by the Gower Society. Now yesterday I was looking through some of my compost and I found this. This is a lovely slow worm. So my challenge for you today is to create a reptile friendly garden. So hopefully your garden's got some great ways of attracting wildlife, maybe some flowers, which are gonna be really helpful for pollinators and other insects. But how can we make it even more friendly for our slow worms and other reptiles? Now you might not want to have snakes in your garden, but actually lizards and snakes are really good at getting rid of pests. Reptiles are also a great indicator. You have a really good food chain or food web in your garden because you've got their top predator up there. So I'm gonna show you a few ways in which you can make your garden a bit more reptile friendly so you can encourage some of those wonderful slow worms, maybe some lizards, and if you're lucky, some snakes. Having a garden pond is a really good way of encouraging lots of amphibians like frogs and newts but also they're great for snakes because snakes like to eat the amphibians so having a wildlife pond is great to increase the biodiversity in your in your garden reptiles love places where they can bask in the sun but also places where they can hide so if you've got a sunny spot in your garden then if you pile up some stones with leaving gaps in between, then this is somewhere that the lizards or slow worms can bask in the daytime and then hide out when it gets too warm later in the day. Make sure your pile of rocks is also close to some undergrowth so that they can hide into. So maybe some long grass that you don't mow, maybe some brambles, maybe a hedge. Your reptiles can then go into the vegetation when they don't want to stay inside the rock bit. Another great wildlife area for your reptiles is if you put corrugated iron or just a piece of black material on the ground. Then again in the morning they can use it for basking on and you'll find snakes hiding underneath it later in the day. And there we go. Underneath my black we've got, how many is there there? Is that two? two slow worms. So the one with the black long lines, that's the female, and the one underneath it, we've got three, no, that one, so that's the female, that's the female, oop, <laughs> there you go, there's two there. So that was one female and one male. So it just shows this is what they want. And if you've read the Gruffalo, then you'll know that a log pile house is what snakes like to live in. And that's exactly true. So this log pile house that I've got here is home to those two, probably a mating pair actually. So a log pile house, that would be a great place to put into your garden to provide house for our slow worms or snakes. And lastly, where I found my slow worm is inside your compost bin. So if you've got a compost bin, make sure you don't move too much of it in the summertime because that's when they can lay their eggs and you might disturb them. So as soon as I found one in mine, I let go of what I was doing, left it alone, and hopefully it's gone back to being nice and warm inside my compost tin. Now a slow worm is a reptile, but it isn't a stake. It's actually a legless lizard. And you can tell if you look underneath. If you look, you can see individual scales along the bottom side of this slow worm. If this was a snake, I wouldn't be holding it for one, but also there would be one continuous elongated scale going across the whole of the width of its body and that helps it slither along and slow worms are anything but slow as you saw in the footage. You can also tell because a lizard can actually blink so if you see the eyes and you manage to see it blink then it's not a snake it's actually a lizard and of course because this one has no legs it's a legless lizard and they still have that lovely forked tongue that sticks out in order for them to smell the air. 
So hopefully you can introduce one of those ways of encouraging reptiles into your garden. If you want to know more about making a pond, I'll be doing a video on that shortly. But now you know how to make a pile of wood that rots down nicely, providing lots of nice warm area, protected area, but also some food for our reptiles. You could put out some rocks in a sunny part, but make sure both of them have got some nice long plants next to it, somewhere for our snakes and our lizards and our legless lizards to actually hide in if they don't want to stay out in the exposed area. Also, your compost bin. So if you've got compost bin, fantastic. If you haven't, just a pile of dead grass or some twigs, leave it and eventually it will turn into compost. So good luck and I'd love to see any pictures of your reptile refuges inside your garden. So please tweet hashtag nature days or at dawn nature days and I look forward to seeing what reptiles will move in with you.